Good morning, everyone. It's 9 a.m. here on riotradio.ca. My name is Manjula Salvaraja, and I'm joined by Kyle Potter of The Undergrads and Tuesday Tune-Ups Jordan Hall. It's actually quite an exciting day here today because we have an exclusive interview this morning with philanthropist, entrepreneur, and business leader extraordinaire, Brett Wilson. Welcome to Right Radio. Good morning, and thank you for allowing me the privilege of being here. It's our pleasure, and you can see there's uh, actually been quite a bit of excitement. We've been having your fans and followers send us questions, <laughs> and hopefully our uh, entire um, station following doesn't crash because we're having so many people tune in, which is very exciting for us. Well, I'm delighted. It's, uh, it was a fun experience getting here. I arrived, arrived in Toronto at 11 o'clock last night, landed somewhere in a hotel between here and Toronto uh, at about 1 in the morning, and uh, here we are. Great. Well, we'll wake you up with our first question. How's that? Go for it. Okay. So this is, uh, I guess, feel free to name one or two things, but um, this is a question that came from uh, one of your fans in the school. What is a key habit or trait you possess that you think has been critical in helping you find or create success in your life? Well, perfectionism is a uh, is an asset, but it's also a liability. And I think moving towards a concept that we call perfect enough has been uh, empowering. Uh, it means letting go of perfection, but making sure that good enough isn't good enough. You know, good enough is how uh, people often leave things. Perfect enough is what we talk about in our business in terms of the businesses I run. We need to be able to be better than others, which means perfect enough. And uh, within perfect enough, there's a, a willingness and in fact almost an, uh, an opportunity to embrace uh, making mistakes. There's uh, often a fear in the part of people that causes uh, a form of paralysis, and that is if they can't get it perfect, they don't want to do it. In other words, they're afraid of making a mistake, and mistakes are one of the greatest learning experiences you can have in your life. So it's, uh, it's really letting go of perfectionism, but still striving for a higher goal, and at the same time being willing to accept that mistakes are not uh, a character flaw. They're just a learning experience. That is a very interesting point. Jordan? Okay, uh, I have a question here. So something I personally would like to know is looking back on everything, did you ever think a kid from Saskatchewan would become one of the most recognizable entrepreneurs in Canada? Well, it was a bit random that that recognition came to play at, uh, you know, Dragon's Den and the, the television show certainly exploded my profile. It didn't really change what I do day to day for the most part. I mean, I've been an investment banker in, uh, in the world of energy for the last 25 years. But uh, as I stepped down and retired from the investment bank, CBC came along and said, uh, uh, are you interested in playing in this reality show that, uh, and frankly, the first time I saw Dragon's Den, I, uh, one of my best friends was one of the dragons and I didn't like it. I didn't like the format. Uh, it wasn't the way the real world works, uh, but at the end of the day, it was uh, probably one of the most incredible platforms ever created for celebrating entrepreneurship. Did I ever expect to be part of that? No, I grew up in a town of 12,000 people. I, uh, I couldn't wait to get out and make my buck. Um, you know, and as I was growing up as a kid, uh, the only fight I ever heard my parents have was over <coughs> money. And uh, uh, as I was lying in bed listening to my parents fighting over uh, you know, where the next dollar was coming from or, and how to spend it, uh, I swore that uh, money would never be an issue in my life. And uh, so I made sure that money wasn't an issue, but I screwed up in most other areas. Uh, so kind of going off that, um, it must take uh, a mixture of like certain characteristics and skills to take the leaps that you have then coming from uh, such a small town. So what do you believe it is about an individual that pushes them to become such an entrepreneur? Well, there's a 20 different questions embedded in that question. It's a very good one, but uh, um, I'm going to go down several paths in answering it. First of all, what's it take to be an entrepreneur? Um, I love that discussion because there's a lot of people have this view that entrepreneurs are born and others say, well, no, I think they can be made. And it goes back to that, uh, that great uh, movie, uh, Trading Places, with uh, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd, where there's a bet as to whether or not being a businessman or an entrepreneur is nature or nurture. And the answer in my mind is absolutely yes. It's, uh, it's an element of both. There are cultures that celebrate entrepreneurship in, uh, in different ways, um, but there's also realities that force entrepreneurship. Being hungry causes an immigrant to work a little harder. And the, and the stories are legend of people coming to, uh, from one country to another with nothing, maybe an education and a couple of bucks in their pocket, but stepping into a new environment and 
by virtue of being hungry, you suddenly have a, a desire, and sometimes with that desire comes passion. And uh, you know, someone works a couple of evenings, uh, or starts working, if you will, as a as a janitor, and ten years later owns a janitorial company with five million a year in revenues. Those stories are not unheard of. So, what does it take to separate people? In the, in the world of entrepreneurship? Well, I think it takes planting a seed at some point, and there's so many different ways of, of planting the seed. I think the Dragon's Den's done a phenomenal job across our nation of planting that seed. I don't think the show does a great job of watering the seed. I don't think it does a great job of cultivating the seed. But in terms of planting the seed and creating good TV, let's give credit where it's due. CBC's done a fabulous job of doing that. So going back, though, the, the concept of planting the seed, that's probably, in my mind, the most most important thing, raising awareness. And that goes back to one of the conversations I'm going to be having with uh, some of the students when I get into a classroom later is talking about core curriculum and my belief that we as a nation could celebrate and generate a different caliber of student if at grade three, grade six, grade nine, and grade 12. And then again, at every college, every educational institution, I don't care whether you're studying to be a, a veterinary medicine doctor or vet med doctor or a, um, a nurse or a, or a welder. Uh, I think we should be studying marketing, entrepreneurship, and philanthropy, and I can spend any amount of time. That's a one-hour talk in itself on mm -hmm. why, but I so fundamentally believe that those three classes will plant the seeds that we need. Absolutely. So I only spoke to one of your 20 questions, <laughs> but, but that was on entrepreneurship. Feel free to come again. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll, I'll take uh, the next one, actually, that leads yeah. into, into something that's very important here. Um, it's obvious that you care about philanthropy. Um, our fans tell us that that's something that actually made you very different on that show, uh, on The Den, uh, one of the reasons that you uh, stood out and had such a following. So you mentioned that this is one of the things that you think schools ought to be teaching. Talk about that. Can you expand on why that is so important, that there, that intersection between business and uh, philanthropy ought to be strengthened. Well, if I may, let me start with the, the three classes and then I'll finish. I'll p spend the bulk of my answer time, if you will, on philanthropy. But the three classes I think that should be core, and we could combine them into one class at younger ages and call it changing the world. But marketing, marketing entrepreneurship and philanthropy, in all cases, it's about awareness. In the case of marketing, it's your point of differentiation. It's how you get your first job. It's how your division or department fights for resources, whether it's people or, uh, or whatever. It's how you attract clients. And again, it just doesn't matter what you're doing when you graduate, you're going to need that skill. Secondly, and the very short answer is there, secondly, in entrepreneurship, I fundamentally believe that awareness is everything, raising the profile of, of some of the great stories of entrepreneurship. And I don't mean some of the iconic families. We have some of the world's greatest entrepreneurs in our country, whether it's Murray Edwards in the West or the Irvings and the Pattisons on each coast, doesn't matter. Um, we have some phenomenal stories, but it's the stories of real people, day-to-day -day people who've built their little businesses into something more. Those are the stories I want to celebrate. Then you come Combine all of that and roll that into the world of philanthropy. And uh, I sometimes joke about the uh, the intersection of entre entrepreneurship and philanthropy being the entrepreneurial philanthropist, whether as a donor or a recipient. I think charities need to be far more entrepreneurial in their ask, mm -hmm. in their recognition of uh, an accountability, recognition of the receipts or the dollars received, and in accountability in terms of what they've done with their money. I also believe that the philanthropic entrepreneur, which is what I was known for on Dragon's Den, is reality. I get value out of helping people. Uh, not every dollar has to have a dollar come running back, as one of the dragons would say. You know, his soldiers work at night. Well, I think it's a pathetic look. I mean, and again, that's for TV. But in the real world, there's an awful lot of people that I work very, very closely with. Uh, in fact, one of them's an alumni of this school, Jeff Boyce, one of my closest friends in Calgary. Phenomenal philanthropist. But f great philanthropy means that you're getting a return on investment out of giving, sharing, helping. There's so many ways of approaching it. And as an entrepreneur, one of the things I saw on Dragon's Den was I was giving people a shot a shot at stardom in terms of their deal on television, but I was also giving them a shot at getting out of the rut that they might have been in, and not every investment worked. I was criticized by some of the other dragons for some of the investments I made. Well, that's laughable, because with 60 investments on the show, I actually invested in 30. That's three times more than all the other dragons Sizable combined. Amount. That's yeah. more than any other dragon in the world. But if you take a portfolio approach to investing, and you have to, that's the economic reality. You can't pick a winner and invest in it. In my case, I picked 30. I knew that there'd be five that would go to zero within a year. 
CBC once asked me, well, which third or which five? I said, well, I don't know. You got to wait the year. You know, if I really knew ahead of time, then I wouldn't have made the investment if I knew it was going to zero. Um, but the reality is with 30 investments, there was going to be five that didn't work. And that's what's happened. There's going to be 10 that, uh, that are still claiming, as Monty Python would put it, we're not dead yet, but the reality is they're <laughs> not going to live. So those businesses aren't going to make it. But I've got 15 that I'm still watching. 15 that are still working. That's 15 amazing. out of 30 is a phenomenal track record. And that's two and three years out. And within that, there's four or five of those investments, any one of which could pay for the whole portfolio. I've got about four, four and a half million dollars invested across those 30 businesses. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of some of the brands that are being developed. Uh, Marissa McTasney and the um, Moxie Trades, which is Pink Work Boots and her line of uh, women's construction and workwear. Um, is from this area, but we've got uh, national brands being built in uh, in Frog Box, which is plastic moving boxes. We've got uh, perfume that's being made from oils in Afghanistan and Haiti and Palestine, and we're looking at uh, you know expanding that product globally. There's no shortage of ways of celebrating entrepreneurs. So going back to your core question, which is how do you um, how do you celebrate philanthropy and what's the integration with everything else you do? I often say that great philanthropy is great business.